Our topic today is going to be on uh, organic chemistry 2. Organic chemistry 1, which is in uh, form 3 work, talks about hydrocarbons, compounds made of carbon and hydrogen. That is alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. So, we say organic 1, organic 1 uh, explains explains on hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons, those are compounds made of carbon, hydrogen, and uh, carbon and hydrogen. So examples of the hydrocarbons, we have alkenes, we have alkenes, and uh, alkynes, and alkynes. But today, we are going to look at organic 2, organic chemistry 2, which deals with the compounds made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So, organic 2, organic 2, we are going to check on uh, alkanols. We have alkanols. We have uh, alkanoic acids. Alkanoic acids. We have detergents detergents and lastly we have the polymers the polymers so those are the compounds that we're going to check when it comes to organic 2 so our first subtopic is going to be on alkanols let's first start with alkanols so having here alkanols these are compounds which are made of carbon hydrogen and oxygen the elements forming uh, elements forming alkanols we have uh, carbon we have hydrogen and we have uh, oxygen those are the elements that forms the alkanols so alkanols are said to be derivatives are derivatives of water of water where the hydrogen atom where the hydrogen atom in uh, water is replaced by the alkyl group hydrogen atom in water is being replaced by the alkyl group for example if we have methanol 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 we have uh, methyl methyl which is ch3 and we have uh, water which is H2O so we replace the hydrogen atom being substituted by the methyl therefore we get here CH3OH this gives us what the methanol and if we have ethanol we talk about ethanol ethanol the hydrogen atom in water being replaced by the ethyl ethyl is C2, C2H5, C2H5. So we have ethyl replacing the hydrogen atom, so plus the OH from the water giving us C2H5OH. We get ethanol. So the trend is going to follow whereby if we talk of uh, propanol, we are going to get a derivative of propyl substituting the hydrogen atom in water giving us propanol giving us propanol now let's have a look at naming naming of alkanols naming of alkanols when it comes to naming of alkanols this depends on the number of carbon atoms that an alkanol is having the number of carbon atoms that it has for example if it has one carbon atom we talk about methanol if it has two carbon atom we talk of ethanol if it has three carbon atom we talk of propanol five uh, four carbon atoms we have butanol and five carbon atoms we have pentanol so the naming continues 
which is going to be determined by the number of carbon atoms that the alkanol is going to have. Now, if you look at the general molecular formula of an alkanol, alkanols have a general molecular formula of CnH2n plus 1, then OH. CnH2n plus 1, then you add the OH, where N represents the number of carbon atoms. N is representing the number of carbon atoms. Or we can also represent it by Cn H2n plus 2O. So either can apply when representing molecular formulas of uh, alkanols, where N here is representing the number of carbon atoms. And uh, the functional unit in alkanols, functional unit, the functional unit in alkanol is where we have the OH, which is going to give the chemical properties. This will give us the chemical properties, chemical properties of alkanols. It's going to give us the chemical properties of alkanols. So there are some of the rules when it comes to naming of alkanols. First, we have uh, naming of alkanols when giving the parent name of the alkanol we identify the longest chain containing the hydroxide ion giving us the parent name of the alkanol so for example if we are having this one if we have a look at this we have one two three four five so we have this one here, those ones are hydrogen atoms, we have their OH, hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. So we have said that the first rule when naming alkanol is you identify the parent name with the chain that has got the highest or the longest number of carbon atoms and it must contain the hydroxide ion. For example, according to this, our longest chain here has got one, two, three, four, five. Five carbon atoms that is pent. So the name is given as pentanol. So at the same time when giving the naming of alkanols, we are supposed to identify the position of the hydroxide ions giving it the lowest number possible from the chain. For example, according to this one, if we start naming from this side, we are going to have one, this is carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four, carbon number five. So hydroxide will be found on carbon number five. But if we start naming the carbon atoms from this end, this is carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four, carbon number five. Therefore, you will find that the OH, which is the hydroxide, is nearer from this end. So we are going to start naming this alkanol from this end here, giving the OH the lowest number possible as on position 1. Therefore, we name it as penta 1 all. Pentanol. Pentan 1 all. So that is how we name alkanols by identifying the position of the OH and giving it the lowest number possible. Then the second one, if we have the substituent group, if we have the substituent group like a methyl or ethyl, the consideration is always given on the OH. For example, we might have this one, one, two, three, four. We put the OH on this side. We put OH there. Let me put a methyl on that end. So we have hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. That are hydrogens. So when it comes to naming of this, this alkanol, we have the OH, we have a methyl. This is a methyl. This one forms 
a methyl. So this is the substituent group. Now, we have said that having a substituent group and an alkanol, we give consideration to the hydroxide ions. The hydroxide ions is on this end. Therefore, if we start naming from this side, we have carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four. From this end, we have carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four. So, if we start from this end, the methyl will be found on carbon number two, while the hydroxide is going to be found on carbon number four. So, that means that we have given the methyl the first consideration before we give the what? The hydroxide ions. Therefore, our naming must start from this end to have the hydroxide ion on carbon number one, while a methyl is going to be on carbon number three. Therefore, when it comes to naming, we name it as the parent name is given with the chain containing the longest number of carbon atoms, which are one, two, three, four, four carbon atoms, that is pentanol. Therefore, we name this one as 3-methyl-butan-1-ol. But so, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, but. So, we have butan one all but since we have the methyl now the position of the methyl is found on carbon number three so we name it as three methyl butan one all three methyl butan one all so we can also have uh, isomerism in uh, alkanols isomerism in alkanols where we say that isomerism these are called isomerism is the existence of compounds with same molecular formula but different structural formula. Compounds with same molecular formula but different structural formula. If you look at alkanols, alkanols will show both positional isomerism and branching isomerism. Positional isomerism and branching isomerism. If we first start with the branching isomerism, Branching isomerism is whereby the substituent group, that is an alkyl, are going to be formed. We have the methyl, we have ethyl, we have propyl being formed as the substituent group on uh, what we are having as from the longest chain. For example, let's have a look at, so we are talking about isomerism, isomerism, isomerism in alkanols isomerism in alkanols so talking about isomerism in alkanols we have already said that isomerism is the existence of compounds with same molecular formula but different structural formula existence of compounds with same molecular formula but different structural formula so alkanols we have said they show both positional and branching isomerism they show both positional and branching isomerism. So if we start with branching isomerism, branching isomerism, this is where the substituent group alkyls are going to be formed. We have a methyl, we have ethyl, we have propyl being formed from the main chain. So let's have a look at buta, uh, pentanol. Pentanol. If we have pentanol, so the first chain, one, two, three, four, five. We have that one there. We put our OH on that. So those are hydrogens. Those are hydrogens on the structure. Therefore, we name this one as pen, pentan, one all. Now we want to form the substituent group. That is a methyl. A methyl is CH3. When forming a methyl, you cannot carry the carbon atom that is containing the hydroxide ions. Therefore, from our structure, we are going to carry the whole of this one here to form a methyl. Therefore, the longest chain that will give us the parent name is going to have four carbon atoms. We start with, this is carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four. Then we have our OH 
there. Forming a methyl again, we can only insert a methyl on the carbon atoms that are found in the middle, but not the carbon atoms that are at the end of the structure. Therefore, our methyl cannot be inserted here and it cannot be inserted here. So we are remaining with the options of inserting the methyl either on this carbon atom or on this carbon atom. Therefore, if we decide to put it here, that is CH3, that's a methyl, we have here hydrogen, that is hydrogen, that is hydrogen, that is hydrogen, that is hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Therefore, our parent name is given with the chain containing the longest number of carbon atoms. That is 1, 2, 3, 4. That is butanol. Therefore, the methyl here is going to be found on carbon number 3, whereby the OH is nearer from this end. Then our naming will start from this side. That is carbon number 1, carbon number 2, carbon number 3, carbon number 4. So we name this one here as butan one we we name this one as three methyl butan one all three methyl butan one all so butanol butan one all is from the parent name then the substituent group which is a methyl is found on carbon number three it is going to be found on carbon number three so this one here we talk of branching isomerism where the substituent group alkyls are being formed our second isomerism is positional isomerism positional isomerism explaining on positional isomerism this is the shifting of the position of the hydroxide ions on the structure the shifting of the position of hydroxide ions on the structure so we have positional isomerism isomerism is the shifting of the position of the hydroxide ions in the structure for example we have here uh, let's talk of uh, propanol so propanol is from three carbon atoms that is c3h7oh so we have here the first carbon atom second carbon atom third carbon atom so we have uh, this one here we put the OH, that is hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. When it comes to naming of this, our OH is nearer from this end. Therefore, we name it as, we, our naming is going to start from this end, carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three. Therefore, we call it propan one all, propan one all. But if we shift the position of the hydroxide ions and place it on carbon number two with the structure of carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three. So we have this one here. We place the OH there. This is hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Therefore, this is named as propan to all. Propan to all. So we are going to have here propan to all. We have only changed the position of the hydroxide ions on the structure. So this is what we talk, we call uh, positional isomerism. Shifting of the position of the hydroxide ions on the structure. So if we change it here, here it is propan 1 all where the hydroxide is on carbon number 1. This one is propan 2 all where the OH is found on carbon number 2. And what if we shift the position of the hydroxide ions on this carbon atom. So we have it one, two, three. Then we put the OH on this carbon atom. What will be the name? Hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. What will be the name of this isomer? This one here. So this will be carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three. Carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three. So, if we start naming from this side or this end, the OH is found on carbon number one. And if we start from this end, the hydroxide ions is found on carbon number three. Therefore, the naming will start from this end since the OH is nearer from this end. Now we name it as 
propana one all therefore this structure and this structure are the same since all the oh are going to be found on carbon number one and this one also carbon number one so the two isomers have the same name they have the same name so that is what we have as the isomerism in alkanols where we have branching isomerism and positional isomerism the next subtopic is on uh, preparation of alkanols how do we prepare alkanols in the lab there are various ways on how to prepare alkanols in the lab so the first one let's have a look at preparation of uh, ethanol how do we prepare ethanol in the lab preparation of ethanol so we have here preparation preparation of alkanols so we have uh, lab preparation or preparation of ethanol preparation of ethanol so we have said that there are various methods on how to prepare alkanols and we have chosen to see on how to prepare ethanol the first method in the preparation of ethanol is uh, fermentation we have uh, fermentation fermentation is the breakdown of uh, glucose in the presence of the enzymes we talk of biological enzyme and the enzyme that we use is the yeast 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 during the breakdown of uh, glucose during breakdown of glucose we use the yeast as the biological catalyst and during the process the glucose is being broken down in absence of oxygen therefore this results into what we call anaerobic respiration anaerobic respiration in the breakdown of glucose if we have here glucose being broken down in the presence of yeast as the biological catalyst we will get here ethanol plus carbon four oxide this method of preparing ethanol is not efficient since the volume of ethanol going to be formed is around 10 percent of the volume therefore and it is also lowly concentrated now to obtain a more pure cons uh, uh, ethanol during the process we carry out fractional distillation where ethanol will distill out at a temperature of around 78 degrees celsius then we will collect a more and pure ethanol therefore this ethanol is known as the crude ethanol glucose is c6h12o6 being broken down in the presence of the yeast in the presence of the yeast giving us c2 H5 OH this one here is liquid plus CO2 gas so that's the product that we are going to get in uh, the process therefore we place here two this one also we place that is four this one is uh, two plus two giving us we are in the balancing of the chemical equation we have two carbon atoms we have six carbon atoms therefore we try to balance this one here we have six oxygens if we put here two place here two that's going to be two carbon plus four carbon giving us six then two that is six giving us 12 hydrogens then oxygen here we are having is uh, six hydrogen so since we are having six hydrogens and here we put uh, three so we have c2h5oh c2h5oh six carbons we have six carbons that is two carbon 12 of hydrogen three uh, five plus one that's going to give us six 
So we try put here two, giving us four. We also put here two. So we have four plus two, twelve. The, uh, four plus two is six carbons, six carbons. This one is uh, five plus one is six times two, twelve of hydrogen, twelve of hydrogen, six oxygen, that is four plus two, giving us twelve of hydrogen. So that equation is uh, fully balanced. So this is how we prepare ethanol. We talk about fermentation, fermentation, breakdown of glucose in absence of oxygen with yeast being used as biological catalyst. So this reaction occurs within a temperature of around, we talk about 35 to around 40 degrees Celsius. If you increase the temperature above this, enzymes which are biological catalysts are going to be killed. Therefore, we don't expect the reaction to occur because this one here, the yeast are living things. So if high temperatures are used, they are going to be killed. And they are the ones acting as the biological catalyst. Then we have the second method on the preparation of ethanol. We have hydrolysis. We have hydrolysis. Hydrolysis of alkenes by use of concentrated sulfuric 6 acid. Hydrolysis of alkenes by use of concentrated sulfuric 6 acid. Then, if you react an alkene, so we have here an alkene plus concentrated sulfuric 6 acid. This gives us alkyl hydrogen sulfate. Alkyl hydrogen sulfate. Alkyl hydrogen sulfate, which is then reacted with water. We have here alkyl hydrogen sulfate plus water giving us alkanol plus dilute sulfuric 6 acid plus dilute sulfuric 6 acid this is the second method on how we can be able to prepare alkanols in the lab that is hydrolysis of alkenes by use of concentrated sulfuric 6 acid for example, let's have a look at ethene. We want to prepare ethanol, so we use ethene, double bond, that is hydrogen, 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 plus H2SO4 liquid. The state symbol for concentrated sulfuric 6 acid is liquid. This one here is gas. So we are going to get CCOSO3H. This is hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. We call this one as ethyl hydrogen sulfate. Ethyl, ethyl hydrogen sulfate. Ethyl hydrogen sulfate. Ethyl hydrogen sulfate formed is then going to be reacted with water molecules to obtain ethanol and dilute sulfuric 6 acid. So we have ethyl hydrogen sulfate, which is C, C. So we have H, 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 O, S, O, 3, H, plus H, 2, O, liquid. This is going to give us C, C, that is O, H, Hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. This is liquid plus H2SO4, liquid. So this is ethanol. That is ethanol. We have hydrolyzed this one here by adding water, obtaining ethanol and dilute sulfuric 6 acid. We have dilute sulfuric 6 acid at the reaction, so we have already obtained ethanol. I've used open structural formulae when writing the chemical equation, which you can also still write using condensed structural formula. Using condensed structural formula, we have uh, CH2, then the double bond, CH2 plus H2SO4 liquid, giving us 
CH3, then CH2O, SO3, H. That is uh, aqueous. This one is liquid. This is gas. So we take this one here, CH3, CH2O, SO3, H plus H2O, liquid, giving us CH3, CH2, OH, this one here is liquid plus uh, H2, SO4, aqueous. So this one is condensed structural formula when writing that chemical equation. Now the third method on how to prepare ethanol, we have reaction, reaction of ethene with the steam with steam this forms the main method used in large scale production of ethanol in industries where we react unsaturated alkenes unsaturated alkenes with the steam this reaction occurs in the presence of phosphoric we have phosphoric acid which acts as catalyst this one here is being used as catalyst and we also have a temperature of around 300 degrees Celsius. Therefore, the equation of the reaction, we are going to have C2, C2H5, CH2, CH2, this one here is a gas plus H2O in gaseous state, then a catalyst is any substance that alters the rate of a reaction but does not take part. Therefore, we place it here, that is H3PO4. In the presence, that temperature, therefore, we get CH3CH2OH liquid. CH2CH3 and OH liquid as the product. So we have this one here as ethanol in that reaction. So we have said the function of the phosphoric acid in this reaction here is going to act as a catalyst and the reaction occurs at a temperature of around 300 degrees Celsius. Therefore, if we want now to obtain ethanol in the process, we carry out fractional distillation where ethanol will distill out at a temperature of around 100 uh, at, at a temperature of around 78 degrees Celsius. So this forms the boiling point of ethanol. Therefore, it will distill physical properties of alkanols. So under the physical properties of alkanols, we have said we look at the three main parts. The first one is the solubility. Second one is the melting and boiling point. And maybe we talk of the densities of alkanols. So let's first have a look at the solubility solubility. Alkanols are soluble in water. They are soluble in water since they are bipolar, meaning that they are going to form a hydrogen bonding with the water molecules. So they are bipolar, then will form hydrogen bonding with the water molecules. So that's what makes alkanols to be soluble in water. But how do their solubilities compare? The solubility of alkanols normally decreases as the molecular mass increases. So as the molecular mass of alkanols increases, their solubility is also decreasing. So we say that are soluble, are soluble in water. Since they form hydrogen bonding with water molecules with water molecules but we say that but their solubility decreases with increase in molecular mass so for example if we have methanol CH3OH and we have 
pentanol, which is C5H11OH. We look at the solubility between the two. This one is more soluble. More soluble. This one is less. Less soluble. Then the second physical property we talk about, the melting and boiling points. Melting and boiling points. Melting and boiling points, alkanols are molecular substances, and we know that molecular substances are having low melting and boiling points. But uh, if you look at the melting and the boiling points of alkanols with their corresponding alkanes, alkanols will have high melting and boiling points than the corresponding alkanes. This is due to the presence of hydrogen bonding, while alkanes are having weak van der Waal forces. And hydrogen bonding is a strong bond compared to weak van der Waal forces. So we say that melting and uh, boiling points, boiling points of alkanols increases increases with increase in molecular mass. As molecular mass of the alkanol increases, the strength of the intermolecular forces of attraction also increases. So therefore, this is going to result into increase in melting and boiling points. So for example, if you're having here methanol and we have pentanol, you find that the melting and boiling point of uh, pentanol is higher than that one of, but of, of, of methanol. This is because this one has a bigger molecular mass resulting into strong intermolecular forces of attraction than that one of methanol. Then we have the density. The density. Density. Density of alkanols is determined by the molecular mass. So as the molecular mass increases, their densities also increases. Now, the next part is on chemical properties. Chemical properties of alkanols. So, the general representation of alkanols is ROH. And we have said that the functional unit in alkanols is the OH. That forms the functional unit in alkanols. So, the first one we check on reaction of alkanols with metals. Reaction of alkanols with metals. When alkanols are reacting with metals, we form salts plus hydrogen gas. So we have here an alkanol plus a metal giving us metal alkanoxide metal alkanoxide plus hydrogen plus hydrogen metal alkanoxide here is the salt this is the salt formed so if we use methanol we get methoxide if we use ethanol we get ethoxide propanol propoxide now how does the chemical equation takes place for example, we carry out a reaction between ethanol with sodium metal. Methanol with sodium metal. If we have here CH3, CH2, OH plus the sodium solid. So the product formed, we get here CH3, CH2O, then we replace this one here. The hydrogen ion, the hydrogen atom is replaced by Na. This one is aqueous plus the what? The hydrogen gas. So we balance the equation by putting here two, putting there two, putting there two. This is ethanol. Ethanol. This gives us sodium ethoxide sodium ethoxide plus the hydrogen gas. So the observation that can be made during the reaction is uh, effervescence. Effervescence is produced due to production of hydrogen gas. Therefore, if we use propanol, which is CH3, CH2, CH2, OH, 
OH, maybe plus, this is liquid plus, magnesium, solid. This gives us CH3, CH2, CH2O. Then we enclose this one here, valency 2. This one is Mg, aqueous, plus the what? The hydrogen gas. We put here 2 to balance that equation. This is propanol. Propanol giving us magnesium propoxide. Magnesium propoxide. So we have and hydrogen gas being formed during the reaction. Hydrogen gas being formed the reaction. So we have, this is the salt form. That is magnesium propoxide. This is sodium ethoxide. So that is the first chemical property. The second chemical property is uh, reaction of alkanol with alkanoic acids. Reactions of alkanols with alkanoic acids. Well, alkanols are reacted with alkanoic acids, it results in the formation of a product known as an ester. An ester is characterized by a pleasant smell or a fruity smell, and the process is referred to as esterification. So if we have here alkanol, we have alkanol plus alkanoic acid. Alkanoic acid, we get alkyl alkanoid. Alkyl alkanoid plus water. Alkyl alkanoid plus water molecule. So alkyl alkanoid is the ester. This one is the ester formed and the reaction is referred to as esterification. The condition necessary for the process of esterification to occur, one, we must have few drops drops of concentrated sulfuric 6 acid concentrated sulfuric 6 acid and the second one there must be some warmth so there must be some warming taking place for the process of esterification to occur so under the ester being formed the alkyl part is going to be derived from alkanols while the alkanoid part is going to be derived from alkanoic acids so for example if we carry out a reaction between ethanol and ethanoic acid reaction of ethanol and ethanoic acid the equation of the reaction we have ch2 oh that is liquid this is ethanol plus CH3 COOH this is ethanoic acid ethanoic acid in the presence of concentrated sulfuric 6 acid which acts as a catalyst during that reaction concentrated sulfuric 6 acid is acting as a catalyst during the reaction and we have here some warmth warmth so we need to carry out warming even in the absence of concentrated sulfuric 6 acid, the reaction will still occur, but it will be taking place at a slower rate. So we are adding this one here to speed up the rate of this reaction. So what is the product that's going to be formed? We get ethyl ethanoid. From the name, when writing the structure of the compound that's going to be formed, we start with the alkanoid part. The OH ions from the alkanoids react with the hydrogen ions from the alkanoic acids giving us what water this gives us water molecule plus now we have the alkanoid part which is ch3coo having an alkyl part this is we have already removed the oh then we are remaining with the ethyl then we have ch2 ch3 ch3 so this is named as ethyl ethanoid ethyl ethanoid whereby the ethyl is derived from the alkanol part that is ethanol 
ethanol gives us the ethyl. The alkanoic part is derived from the alkanoic acid, ethanoic acid. Now, drawing the structure of the ester, that is CH3, CH, so the structure of the, of the, of the ester is going to be C, that is C. We have here an oxygen, which forms double covalent bond with the carbon atoms. Then we have this oxygen again, joining with that. Then we have this one. This is hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. This one has two hydrogen, hydrogen. This one, hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. That is the structure of the ester named as ethyl ethanoid. Ethyl ethanoid. Let's have a look at a different structure. For example, maybe we use uh, propanol plus ethanoic acid. Propanol plus ethanoic acid. So we draw up the structure of a reaction between propanol and ethanoic acid. Propanol and ethanoic acid. So we have propanol is CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. Plus CH3, COOH. This one is aqueous, this is liquid. So we have already said that during the process of esterification, we are going to take the OH ions reacting with the hydrogen ions, giving us water molecules, that is a H2O liquid. Then we have the alkanoid part, which is CH3, so plus CH3, COO. Then we have already removed the OH ions. Then we write the alkyl part, starting from this end, adding towards this. So we get CH2, CH2, CH3. So we named this one here. This one is the alkanoate from the organic acid, giving us ethanoate. And this one is propyl from propanoic acid. So we get propyl ethanoate. Propyl ethanoate. This one is propanol. This one is ethanoic acid. So the structure will be carbon, carbon. We have oxygen, oxygen, carbon, carbon, carbon. So those ones are having hydrogens, hydrogen, 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 another hydrogen. And this one here we have hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. So this is the ester that is going to be formed and the process we have said is known as esterification and uh, the third chemical properties of alkanols third chemical properties of alkanols we can now have a reaction between alkanols and oxidizing agents oxidizing agents the oxidizing agent we are having is acidified potassium manganate 7 or acidified potassium chromate 6 ions. So we have here alkanol, alkanol plus the oxidizing agents, which is KMnO4. It is going to be acidified or K2Cr2 or 7, which is also acidified. This gives us alkanoic acid plus water molecule. Meaning that the reaction here is referred to as oxidation. So alkanols are oxidized to alkanoic acids and water molecules is also going to be formed. To show that a reaction has already taken place in this reaction here, the color of acidified potassium manganate 7 ions will change from purple to colorless, while acidified potassium chromate 6 ion changes from orange to green. So we have KMnO4H positive changing from purple 
to colorless purple to colorless where k2 cr207 which is also acidified changes from orange to green orange to green and the alkanol is oxidized to alkanoic acid so this forms lab preparation of alkanoic acid so for example if we have ch3 ch2 oh this one here is liquid we are having the oxidizing agent which can be kmno4 in the or k2 cr2 o7 h positive i've written two of them which means that i can use either of them i can use acidified potassium manganate 7 or acidified potassium chromate 6 ions therefore we are going to get ch3 coo h this one here is aqueous plus water molecules liquid so meaning that ethanol ethanol here is oxidized to ethanoic ethanoic acid ethanoic acid so that is uh, another chemical reaction and we also have combustion burning of alkanols in air alkanols are flammable alkanols are flammable and when you burn them in air they will burn in uh, oxygen resulting in the formation of uh, water and carbon four oxide and you also need to note that alkanols are saturated so the color of the flame that they will produce during combustion is a blue flame they burn with the blue flame resulting in the formation of water and carbon four oxide so we talk about the fourth chemical is combustion combustion that is burning of alkanols in air where we have said that when burning alkanols being saturated they burn in air resulting in the formation of water and carbon four oxide and the flame they produce is a blue flame since they are saturated so we have c2h5oh liquid plus oxygen gas resulting in the formation of co2 gas plus h2o liquid anytime you write a chemical equation it needs to be balanced it needs to be balanced for example here we are having two higher carbons we have one carbon we can try put two there we have got six hydrogens here we have two so we put three and we have three plus four giving us seven then this one is two we we minus one we put here three three times two is six plus one giving us six seven oxygen so the chemical equation on that one there is balanced then we have the fifth chemical properties of alkanols is dehydration reaction with concentrated sulfuric six acid reaction with concentrated sulfuric six acid concentrated sulfuric six acid concentrated sulfuric six acid is hygroscopic which means that it has the ability to absorb water molecules or moisture from a substance therefore when you react alkanols with concentrated sulfuric six acid alkanols are going to be dehydrated and we are going to get alkene plus the water molecules for example if we have here c2h5oh which is liquid in the presence of concentrated sulfuric six acid which is h2so4 liquid this reaction needs to occur at a temperature above 170 170 degrees celsius therefore we get here c2 h4 gas plus h2o liquid this is ethanol being dehydrated to what to ethene we get ethene gas so if we have propanol in the presence of concentrated sulfuric six acid we are going to get what propene plus water molecules the reaction is referred to as dehydration reaction and the conditions needed for this reaction to occur is concentrated sulfuric six acid at a temperature above 170 so that also forms lab preparation of alkenes 
when you want to prepare alkenes in the lab, we carry out dehydration of alkanols using concentrated sulfuric six acid at a temperature above 170. Apart from concentrated sulfuric six acid, we can also use aluminum oxide, which acts as a dehydrating agent. At the same time, it also acts as a what? As a catalyst during this reaction here. So, this forms the chemical properties that alkanols undergoes. Alkanols undergoes. And the last part, under alkanols, we can have a look at uses of uh, alkanols. Uses of alkanols. What are some of the uses of alkanols? One is used as solvents, e.g. in manufacture of drugs. Alkanols are being used as solvents in manufacture of drugs. The second use of alkanols, they are being used as antiseptics um, in certain concentration. So we talk about antiseptics. Antiseptics. So we use alkanols as antiseptics, that is when they are at a given concentration, we use them as antiseptics. When we talk about antiseptics, we use them in the killing of germs. For example, when you go to the kinosis where we shave our hairs, you will find those barbers use uh, methanol after shaving to apply on the places where have been shaved or they have made the cut. That one is to kill any pathogenic organism that might cause disease after the shaving. Then we also have the third use of alkanols. We also use them as alcoholic drinks. Alcoholic drink. Alcoholic drink. This one is only when in low concentration. In low concentration like ethanol. So we can also use them as alcoholic drinks in low concentration. And the fourth one, we also have manufacture in manufacture of uh, polymers. In manufacture of polymers. For example, we have polyvinyl chloride. We have polyvinyl chloride. We have polythene. Polythenes. So we have manufacture of the polymers that gives us some of the uses of uh, alkanols. Uses of alkanols. So we have being used as solvents in manufacture of drugs, antiseptics in the killing of germs. We use them as an alcoholic drinks and we also use them in manufacture of what? Polymers. We talk about synthetic polymers. Synthetic polymers. And now we also have alcohols. Uh, the effects of alcohols, that is, uh, when we take alcohol, when you drink alcohol, some of the effects on human beings, they cause diseases, like we have liver cirrhosis. Liver cirrhosis is a disease caused by excessive intake of alcohol, burning of the cells of the alcohol. Then we also have addiction and hallucinations, that is, under the uses of alcohols, we talk about some of the effects of taking alcohols. Then we also have the last part of uh, alkanols here that we can talk about. I think that brings us to the end of uh, alkanols, and the next topic is going to be on alkanoic acids. Alkanoic acid will form the next part of our lesson.